Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Hope Fellowship. I'm so glad that you're joining us on this Sunday morning. It's going to be such a good day today, but if it's your first time, first of all, I want to say welcome. Um, you could be doing a million other things, but you chose to be here with us. We appreciate that. My name is Mary Solis. I'm the online campus pastor, and I want to give you just a snapshot, a little overview of what service is going to be like today, especially for those of you who are joining us for the first time. We're going to kick it off, and we're going to sing songs of worship. Um, this is such an important moment. Don't miss this moment. You know, sometimes we uh, hear in person, like, you kind of want to come after the worship, and it just, it, it can be miss this moment. And I want to encourage you to savor that moment of worship and really join us in worshiping God together. This is when we get to sing songs to Him and about Him, and it just recenters us. It grounds us. It helps us focus our attention on Him. So join us as we worship uh, through song today. Then we're going to have a message from our lead pastor, John McKenzie. Um, we're continuing a series we kicked off last week called When the World Breaks. This series is really all about when we face challenging situations where it feels like, man, like my world is falling apart and how to navigate seasons like that. If we haven't faced a time like that, we probably will. And so it's so important to know how to navigate that. So it's gonna be a great service today. Then we're gonna uh, conclude service by just giving you some next steps. Um, at the end of service, I'll come right back here where I am right now, and we're gonna give you just some next steps. It's our mission to invite everyone to find Jesus and help them take a step closer to the center of God's purpose for their lives. And that looks different for all of us, but we wanna come alongside you and help you take that step, whatever it is for you today. It's gonna to be such a good day. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, let's just pray, prepare our hearts for service before we jump in and join in for worship. Lord, thank you so much. Thank you so much for every single person that is here online today. God, there are a million reasons why they might be online. They might be facing hardship, trials, difficulties, they might just have a busy week ahead. For whatever reason they're here, maybe they're in a hospital or they're traveling. God, you know them, you see them, and you encourage us no matter where we're at or what we're doing, you are with us. And so God, today I pray you're glorified. I pray that you lead this time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Go ahead and jump in the chat with us. Give us an amen on that, and then come on over, grab your cup of coffee. Maybe you're eating breakfast or brunch, and join us for worship, and let's worship God together today.
be ashamed of the name of Jesus. So that's why we sing it out. Sing, no, I'll never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How could I ever walk away from the one who saved my life? Oh, and no, I'll never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Up your soul, 
Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs So get up and praise the Lord Come on, you said Come on, my soul No, don't you get shy on me Lift up your soul Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Come on, my soul No, don't you get shy on me Lift up your song Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord oh, Praise the Lord Praise the Lord Praise the Lord Praise the Lord mm-hmm. oh. praise you again and again cause all that I have is a hallelujah hallelujah I know it's not much I've nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mom, would you give him praise? Father, you are worthy of our praise. That you're worthy of our doubts, of our fears, of our burdens. God, we would lay it down at your this morning, God, and we praise you through it all. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Born of his spirit and washed in his blood. And what he did for me on Calvary is more than enough. We sing, I trust in him. Oh, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. in my risen 
Lord, he heard me and he answered my prayers. Can we sing it to him? Sing, I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. That's why I trust him. Come on, we sing it out to him. Sing, I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. That's why. here at Hope, one of the things we believe is that prayer has the power to move the hand of God and also be the catalyst that reshapes maybe our heart and our faith a little bit. And so today, one of the things that I want to do is I actually want to bring our needs to God. In fact, I love that scripture over and over and over encourages us to cast our cares upon the Lord. It talks about bringing our anxieties and our difficulties and our needs to a God who's attentive to them. And I love this song that we just sang. Like there's this line in there that's this constant reminder. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. And I know that's a reality in some people's lives in their room that they brought something to God and he answered in an incredible way. But I also know that there's a reality in here that some people have not experienced that yet. But I believe in a God who can do that for you as well if you will just put a little trust in him. And so I want everyone in this room to bow their heads and close their eyes. And if you've got a need in your life that you need God to answer, I want you just to lift up your hand nice and high. Or if you're joining us online, just type the word prayer into the chat right there. And as I pray today for you, I would encourage you to speak out whatever's in your heart to God. And Lord, I just come to you right now, Lord, and I just want to thank you. I want to thank you that you are our loving Heavenly Father that wants to know what's going on in our lives, that cares about what's going on in our lives. And as we come to you with our needs, whether they're financial and we need a miracle, whether we need a new job, whether it's health-related and we've got something that we need your healing touch on, that you are faithful to hear us, that you are faithful to answer, and that you are a big God who can do miracles. And we trust you, believing that you are going to give us these answers. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Hey, we're going to go back into this song. And sometimes I think we don't always know what to pray. So we're going to use this song as a bit of prayer of faith, saying, God, we trust you and we seek you. Would you join us? I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why. That's why I trust him. I saw the Lord and he heard and he answered. I saw the Lord and he heard and he answered. I saw the Lord 
declaration today that whether we're waiting on an answered prayer or we're living on the other side of it, we trust you. And for every person out there who is waiting, who is wondering if you'll come through, God, I just pray that you act on their behalf. God, and show yourself, show yourself faithful to them. I pray every person is encouraged and strengthened. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Wow. It's such a powerful time of worshiping and worshiping God together, just declaring in trust that God is a God who acts on our behalf. How incredible is that? <laughs> the creator of the universe, the one that created you and I, he hears us, he listens to us, and he acts on our behalf. That's our hope and our prayer for you this morning. Hey, if it's your first time here, I'm so glad that you're with us today. My name is Mary Solis, I'm the online campus pastor and I would love to connect with you. It's so easy to hide behind the screen. We've all done that, we've all been there. But I want you, if you're a regular here, you watch online and online is your co co online is your home campus. Um, we wanna send you just a small gift in the mail and just ways to get more connected and you can decide to take that step. Um, so pull your phone out and text HOPE ONLINE. It's on the screen here, HOPE ONLINE to 97000. We'll send you a link. Let us know you want to connect to Hope, and we'll get you that gift and just some information about Hope so that you can get more connected here. We're going to move into a time of giving, and if we're honest, we know giving is important and that it matters, but it's so difficult to give when we're wondering if food will be on the table or the bills or have to be paid. But I love that we're encouraged as Christ followers to seek first the kingdom of God, to put him first and know that he's going to meet our needs. This is what it says in Matthew 6. So don't worry about these things, saying what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Amazing. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously. He'll give you everything you need. So today, if you want to join us in trusting God with our resources and just putting his kingdom first, you can text any amount to 84321, or you can head over to hopefellowship.net slash give. We're so glad you're here. Welcome to Hope Fellowship. Before we continue with this week's message, here are a few quick announcements. Hey Hope, if you or someone you know is looking for a Spanish speaking church in the area, I wanna make sure you know about Pastor Luis and Conexion Church, which meets at our McKinney campus on Sunday afternoons. Not only do we believe and love in uh, Pastor Luis, but we believe in Conexion's vision and mission to provide a vibrant community of Jesus followers for our Spanish speaking friends in and around McKinney. Pastor Luis, I want you to just take a, a second, introduce yourself, and tell us about Conexion Church. Thank you, John, for that great introduction. I'm privileged to be the lead pastor at Conexion Church, where our passion is living by Jesus' example, uh, and we serve genuinely. We gather every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. at the Hope McKinney campus in a space where everyone feels at home. 
Our mission is as simple as it is profound, to love God and our neighbor, to delve into the truths of the scriptures, and to disciple one another so we all grow stronger in our faith. We're committed to sharing our message of hope and salvation, aiming to transform lives and communities through the power of the gospel. At Conexión Church, you'll find a place to grow spiritually, serve others, and live out your faith in a community setting. If you know someone who would benefit from being part of this movement, please invite them to join us and experience the love and hope found in Christ. I love it. I love it, man. And, and if you, uh, you know, you have some Spanish-speaking friends and neighbors, I want you to tell them about Conexión Church, or maybe you're at Hope and you are a Spanish speaker, you come from that background and, and you might want to be a part of what they're doing as, as a leader or as a volunteer. I want you to make sure you go to the website, conexionchurchtx.org, and you will get all the information you need. Man, I am so excited about what God's gonna do. Thanks, and God. we want to be a part of that. God bless you guys. God bless you. Here at Hope, we want to come alongside parents and guardians to support and nurture your children's spiritual growth and relationship with Christ. We have multiple resources available to help you connect to Hope Kids. You can follow Hope Kids on Instagram and Facebook, access weekend resources in the Hope app, and visit hopefellowship.net slash hkresources to check out devotionals, helpful videos, and conversation starters. Stop by the Info Center after service to grab a physical copy of our Hope Kids Four Ways to Connect card. One of the ways we are actively pursuing unity at Hope Fellowship is through having intentional conversations that builds relationships and understanding. Adults and students ages 15 and up are invited to join us at our upcoming Cookies and Conversations Unity event, where we will focus on the topic of how to love our enemies as we engage in a guided conversation about race, inclusion, Jesus, and the church. This event is happening on Sunday, April 28th at 3 p.m. at the Prosper Campus. To learn more and register to let us know you're coming, visit hopefellowship.net slash unity. To learn more about what we have coming up at Hope, visit hopefellowship.net slash events or download our Hope Fellowship app. Have a great week. Well, welcome all of our campuses, all of you watching online, all of us here. Um, uh, just a couple things, Friday, this Friday, we got the Gobi Family Workshop, and this is all about the next generation and the anxiety that, that uh, sometimes accompanies their lives and challenges them, depression, uh, maybe even your life. Um, we've got uh, Friday night, a session for all, high school on down to infants and then parents. So you can sign up hopefellowship.net slash events. And then Sunday, April 28th, we got cookies and conversations at our Prosper campus, three o'clock. And, and this, you know, I get asked about this. This is, is it, you know, if I could sum it up in one word, it's about relationship. It's about building bridges with relationships and may, with people who don't come from my background, don't come from our culture, don't look like us perhaps, but we, we, we certainly as a church share a common bond in many ways. And uh, this is all about building that relationship and having conversations. So I invite you to come to the Prosper Campus Sunday, April 28th. Um, second week of a series that we're calling When the World Breaks. Many of us are experiencing in our own lives challenges, things, that are going on. It may not be, as we talked about or interviewed Mike Martin last week from our Prosper campus. Shout out to Mike and the, and the team at Prosper. Thanks for loaning him uh, to us last week. But um, we're not here to compare our stories, uh, but you may be going through something right now, or you have, you've learned, maybe you will. And my heart today, and, and actually in this whole series, is to, is to help us understand that that Jesus really does care about our heartache. He, he does care about our challenges, our pain. He cares about the things that happen in our lives when it, we feel like our world is falling apart. And so 
Uh, today, as we dive into the story of Job, it's an Old Testament character. And um, in many times, I've said this so many times when we look at characters, whether that be Moses or Abraham or whoever, we're not trying to be like Job or Moses or Abraham or Paul. We're trying to be like Jesus. However, the stories in the Old Testament, Paul tells us, they're examples to us. They're, they're um, stories to help us in our journey, in our faith, the good, bad, and the ugly. And God includes it all in his scripture, the good, bad, and ugly. And so today, Job is a very challenging story. And I want you to, to know that I don't approach, hopefully I don't approach anything, but especially a, a message like this with any kind of pride or arrogance uh, in the sense that I have it all together and I know what I'm doing and I know what I'm talking about in the sense of I've, I've mastered this. I'm learning with you, and, and as we look at this story, there are some challenging things for us to look at. And I, and I know that whatever world may be falling apart in your life, your marriage, your family, your business, your health, whatever it is that, that is staring you in the face and you just feel like, I'm all alone, I don't know what to do, uh, I don't feel like, I feel like God's a million miles away. I, I want you to know that he cares for you. We do too. And, and today, if you'll open your heart, I really believe he's going to speak to us. The story of Job, I want to start with chapter one and just dive into what happens. It's, it explains itself. One day, the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord and the accuser Satan came with them. Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. And Satan answered the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth. And I know that's a weird kind of thing. Like, they're like, what? How did that? I don't have any idea. Okay, so that's the theological answer of the day. <laughs> don't know. I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Then the Lord asked Satan, he just threw Job, he's throwing Job right under the bus, right? Have you noticed my servant Job? He's the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. Satan replied to the Lord, yes, but Job has, very good, uh, has good reason to fear the Lord. You have always put a wall of protection around him in his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. But reach out and take away everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. All right, you may test him, the Lord said to Satan. Do whatever you want with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically. So Satan left the presence of the Lord, or the Lord's presence. So, okay, so that's the first part of the story. Um, it goes on to say in that chapter that uh, Satan comes back to God and says, hey, uh, let me touch him physically. Let me, let me, you know, cause sickness to happen in his body. And, and I promise you, if you'll let me do that, he's going to curse you. And, and, and the Lord said, okay, you can cause sickness, but you can't take his life. Okay, so in one day, here's what happens to Job. He loses his livestock. He loses all of his fortune. He loses all of his house. He loses his family, his kids. All his kids are, are dead in one day. Him and his wife are there alone, and he is in a state where his world has fallen apart. One day, he's on top of the world. One day, he is living the dream. The next day, his world has fallen apart. So what do we do when our world falls apart? What do we do when one day is fine and the next day you find out a, a bit of information, you get a doctor's report, something is going on and, and you are in a state of confusion, anger, questions? What do we do? Well, in, in the story, again, humbly, yet, um, yet confidently, I want, to, I want to, us to look at the Scripture, because I really believe we're going, to, we're going to learn. We're going to learn today. And if you'll open your heart and your mind, you're going to learn as well with me what happens when our world falls apart. What do we do? Here's how Job responded. And, and my first thought is, is this, depth of relationship equals depth of endurance. Depth of relationship. In other words, Job's relationship with God, how deep that is, or how shallow that is, is directly related to his ability to endure. And I believe it's the same with us. The depth of our relationship, 
Job's relationship with God was not in a state of neglect, wandering, you know, just doing his own thing, or disobedience. His, his relationship with God was not a religious one. It was a personal one. Job chapter 1, verse 1. There was once a man named Job who lived in the, in the land of Uz. He, he was blameless, a man of complete integrity. He feared God, stayed away from evil. Verse 4. Job's sons would take turns preparing feasts in their homes, and they would also invite their three sisters to celebrate with them. And when these celebration, c- celebrations ended, sometimes after several days, Job would purify his children. He would get up early in the morning and offer a burnt offering to each, uh, for each of them. In other words, to the Lord. Now, this is Old Testament, but in, this is even before the law of, of sacrifice. But he was just offering the Lord, saying, hey, Lord, I don't know what my kids did. Maybe they sinned. Perhaps my children have sinned and have cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular practice. Job had a relationship with God that that he feared the Lord. In fact, when all of this happened to Job, lost his family, lost his fortune, lost everything he had, he says, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, I don't know about you, that might not be the first thing on my mind. Does that make sense? I mean, that may not be the first thing that I think about when everything has just fallen apart and I just look to the Lord and I just say, well, you, you give and you take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In fact, his wife, eventually, as he's got boils all over his body and, and he is in such pain, his wife looks at him and says, Job, curse God and die. You got to be careful about the wife, okay? <laughs> got to be careful. That is Scripture. That is Scripture. <laughs> I'm just being serious. So, um, Job says, I'm not going to curse God. I'm, I'm, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, Here's what, I'm, here's what I want you to get out of this por- portion of the, of the story. Job's depth of relationship with the Lord was directly related to his endurance. His ability, we're going to see, there's 42 chapters. We're going to read all of them. No, I'm kidding, we're not. But in 40, we're going to see the depth of Job's relationship. Now, Job's not perfect. He's human. But we're going, to want, we're going to see just how deep his relationship is when the going gets tough. Listen, if, you're, if, you're faith, if our faith is a shallow one, to say it's a cultural faith, please don't be offended. But if you come to church once or twice a month, you, you barely do anything spiritual, you don't even pray when you eat, you know, those kinds of things. And I'm not judging you. I'm just saying when our faith is minimal, when it is more cultural than anything, than personal, then, then that shallow faith is going to be directly related to how we're, we're, how we're able to endure pain, how we're able to endure trials or challenges. And when the going gets tough for shallow faith, the endurance is shallow. When the going gets tough for deep faith, deep endurance. I, I, I just believe it's important that we understand that he was not in a state of just doing whatever he wanted. He feared God. He, and what, I, what I mean by that is he loved God, and he, and he loved his kids, and he just wanted, every, he wanted them to, to, to please the Lord. He wanted his own life to please the Lord. Let me put on the screen like this. The deeper our relationship with God, the less our faith is shaken. And I've had friends endure painful things in their lives, and yet they're strong. They're still here. They're, they're still serving. They're still praising God. And I've had friends whose faith is shallow, and they're, they're challenged. They're challenged with their relationship with God. Instead of drawing close to the Lord, they back away. 
instead of pressing into their faith and, and, and their trust and, and, and their, their relationship with God, they back away and, and they have all, all kinds of issues with God and disillusionment with God. The depth of our relationship equals the depth of our endurance. On a scale from one to 10, 10 being, let's say, at this point, Job, zero being Satan. Where are you? Where am I? And, and the answer to that question is, uh, I don't know until you get there. Does it make sense? Because many of us would say, you might say in pride, saying, well, I, man, I think I'm an eight, man. I, I'm come this far. Okay. Well, if you experience something like Job, I don't know. Does it make sense? I, I, I want my faith to, I want to keep growing. That's, this is why I beg you. I beg you to get on Right Now Media and do, do uh, Bible studies. I beg you to get into a group. I beg you to, to grow in your faith. I beg you to get into community. I beg you to serve. I beg you to do all kinds of things. Why? Not because I need more numbers or we need more things, because it's for you. Because I know the depth of our relationship determines the depth of our endurance. And when life gets tough, when marriages get tough, when finances get tough, when f- physical disease, all those things, when those happen, I'm good. I'm good. It doesn't mean we don't have pain. It doesn't mean we don't like, wow, Lord, what's going on? But I have, a, I have an anchor. I have an anchor to my life. And my anchor is not my money. And my anchor is not my possessions. And my anchor is not even my family. My anchor, listen, is Jesus. Does that make sense? Even if it doesn't, it's right. Okay, so number two, number two. Questions can either equal bitterness or repentance. Now, I know repentance is a strong word. Stay with me. It is totally normal to ask questions. We're going to look at the life of Job. He starts off his his initial response is, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. I'm not going to curse God. But there are questions that, are, that arise. From chapter 3 to chapter 38, there are questions that Job has of God. There are questions that his friends, he's got three friends that come around him. And initially, how many have friends like, don't raise your hands. How many friends like this, they initially come around you to support you. And then when they, you can't explain what's going on, they say, well, you probably got sin in your life. That's why this is happening. And they were just, I mean, they were beating him up. You go read it. I mean, they're just going, Job, there's got to be sin. There's got to be something wrong. Confess it. Repent. And Job was like, I don't know what I've done. I promise you, oh, you were lying, you know, type of thing. So uh, watch your friends. <laughs> Chapter 3, you ever been here? You ever been here? Let the day of my birth be erased. Maybe for you there have been times in which I know I've, I've walked through some, some friends that have lost a child. I, I can't think of anything harder. Um, and I know that there have been times in which they've prayed this. God, I wish I, wanted, I wish I would never have been born. And the night I was conceived, let that day be turned to darkness. Let it, lost, let it be lost even to God on high and let no light shine on it. Let the darkness and utter gloom claim that day for its own. Let a black cloud and sh- overshadow it and let the darkness terrify it. Let that night be blotted off the calendar, never again to be counted among the days of the year. Never again to appeal, appear among the months. Let's go to chapter 10. Let's go to chapter 10, 7. I'm disgusted with my life. You ever been there? I'm disgusted with my life. Let me complain freely. My bitter soul must complain. I say to God, don't simply condemn me. Tell me the charge. Job, Job, in in this discord, if you go back and read it, Job is like, God, what did I do? If I've sinned in some way, I want to repent. I want to do right. What have I done? 
Don't just simply condemn me. Tell me what I've done wrong. You bring this charge against me. What do you gain by oppressing me? Why do you reject me? The work of your own hands. While, while smiling on the schemes of the wicked, he goes on to say, and we've done this, right? Have you ever, you ever thought about, hey, what about them, Lord? They are wicked. <laughs> and look where they live. I mean, they are, do, do you consider them? Why me? They deserve far worse than me. That's, Job is like, hey, you laugh at the wicked. You bless the wicked. They're like prospering like crazy. And look at me. I haven't done anything wrong. <clears throat> Let me just say, questions are normal, and God is not intimidated by our questions. However, our questions can either lead us to bitterness, or they can lead us to repentance. Thirty-five chapters. Job is doing this. He's doing, with his friends, he's doing this, and he is in a state of utter dismay and disgust. He's disgusted. He's like, I wish I'd never been born. Okay, so all of that happens. Finally, the Lord speaks. Here's what he says. Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind, who is this? I wish I had the God voice. I have a friend in, in uh, Rockwall that, man, he's got a voice. It's that, it's, I mean, it sounds like God. When he speaks, it sounds like God. I have a weak voice. Who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorant words? Brace yourself like a man, because I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. Where, okay, so God goes on this two chapters, okay? Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you know so much. Who determines its dimensions and stretch out the survey, surveying line? What supports its foundations? And who laid it, its cornerstone as the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted? Okay, so for two, for joy. For two chapters, God just, I mean, he says, who are you? Who do you think you are? Type of, type of talk. <clears throat> and here's the moment of decision. God is talking to Job, asking him questions. And this is a moment of decision. Job can either say, God, with all due respect, I could give a flip about the dimensions of this earth. I don't care if we're one degree closer to the sun, we'll die. If one degree further, we'll freeze. I don't care. I'd rather die right now. So let's go back to my question. What is wrong with me? What did you, did you, he, he could go that way. And many of us do. Many of us do. Two chapters, God confronts Job. And then Job finally responds to the Lord. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do anything and no one can stop you. You asked, who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorance? It is I. And I was talking about things I knew nothing about. Things far too wonderful for me. You said, listen, and I will speak. I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. I had only heard about you before, but now I've seen you with my own eyes. This is the moment of decision. Is he going to pride up, or is he going to humble himself? And if you're with me, there, there, is, there is a part of me that could have thought, you know, like, I mean, that, that's a valid thing. God, I know you made the earth, and, and great. I, I mean, man, no, I'm not, talk, I'm not saying I'm wise like you. I'm not saying I know everything. I'm just asking about my problem. I'm just asking about my life. I'm just, I don't know what's going on. And it's out of control. My world has fallen apart. He, he could have gone that road, and I'm telling you, that road leads to bitterness. But Job didn't. I take back everything I said. I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. And you know, I'm reading the story and I'm going, well, what did Job have to repent of? I mean, what did he do so bad? Job understood. He, he understood that my lack of trust, my lack of faith, in other words, just, just 
understanding that you're God and I'm not, and I don't know where this is going. I don't know what I've done, but Lord, I'm going to trust you anyway. And he, he, just, he just failed to do that for 35 chapters. Just why, 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 why? I wish I wasn't born. I wish this wouldn't happen. I wish, you know, whatever. And the Lord confronts him. And he could have said, uh, you know what? I don't care about the earth. But he doesn't. He says, you know what, God? I'm an idiot. I don't know what, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I repent, and many of us don't like that word, I repent, and many of us need to turn that direction. The deeper the faith, the fewer the questions. That's a hard thing. I, I'm not saying I have it mastered, but the deeper the faith, the fewer the questions. And Job learns the hard way. Job did not have it easy. Let me put it on the screen like this. We can ask our questions of God in the midst of our breaking, but it's important that we posture ourselves in humility and ultimately in repentance. God, I'm sorry I didn't trust you. I'm sorry. Have you, you ever done, don't raise your hands, but have you ever done this? You, you, get, you get to a point in your life, your world is falling apart, and then you, like me, want to take control. Oh, I'm, I'm, well, I'm going to fix this. I have got it under control. I'm telling you. Job repented of that. Just saying, I don't have him in control. I'm nobody. Lord, why did I even question you? Humanly speaking, we have every right to question, right? We're just like, man, this doesn't make sense. Where's the justice in this? Supernaturally speaking, the quicker we can get past our questions, the quicker we can get to the plan of God. Number three, trusting God equals plan of God. Now, before I go on, I think it's important to note that Job still mourns his family. This world is cruel. This world is not fair. We live in a fallen world. And I don't care what the faith preachers tell you. We live in a fallen world, and every one of us are going to die. If the Lord doesn't come, we're all going to die. It doesn't always go our way. It doesn't feel like we're always highly favored and blessed. Now, spiritually speaking, we are. Of course we are. His kids still died, and it was painful. And we walked through that. And those were part of the questions that Job has. He's just like, I, I just... I mean, God, what in the world? Okay, I'm going to trust you. Job's friends, they encounter God themselves. And God, uh, I, it's not in the text, but I think it's in the Hebrew text that he just called them idiots. He goes, you friends, you're not friends, you're, you're just idiots. You don't know what you're talking about. They even use the word. They even use the, the word. In my spirit, I felt compelled to talk to you, to confront you, Job. Spirit, that's all kinds of stuff. God rebukes them. And then he says, your fate is up to Job and how he prays for you. Here's the last chapter of the book of Job. You ready? When Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. Then all his brothers, sisters, and former friends came and feasted with him in his home. And they consoled him and comforted him because of all the trials the Lord had brought against him. And they didn't even realize it wasn't the Lord, it was the enemy. And each of them brought him a gift of money and a gold ring. So the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life even more than in the beginning. And the point here that I want you to hear is that <clears throat> Life isn't fair, and it doesn't always go the way we want. But if we can, if we can get grow our faith, our endurance will stretch to the point of trust. And when we can trust, the plan of God begins. Because this world, 
it rains on the, on the just and the unjust. In other words, bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to bad people. Bad things happen. We live in that world. If we can, if we can grow that faith, if we can deepen our relationship with the Lord, the fewer the questions, the greater the trust. And the plan of God begins to unfold. For now, he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 team of oxen, 1,000 female donkeys. He also gave Job seven more sons and three more daughters. He named his first daughter uh, Rebecca, the second Sarah, and the third Bobby Jean. In all the land, no women were as lovely as the daughters of Job. And their father put them in his will along with their brothers. Job lived 140 years after that, living to see four generations of his children and grandchildren. Then he died, an old man who lived a long, full life because his depth of relationship enabled him to have a deep depth endurance. And because of that, even though he had the questions, those questions led him to repentance instead of bitterness. And, and that repentance led him back to trust, which equals the plan of God. I don't know where you are today. I don't know who needed to hear this, but I'm telling you right now, for many of us, the word today is you need to grow up. You need, we need to deepen our faith. For some of us, the word of the day is stop the questions and start the repentance. For some of us today, is, God, help me to trust you more. I want your plan, not mine. And what the enemy has stolen from me, what the enemy has caused, I pray that you would recover, that you would restore. But either way, I'm going to trust you. Guys, this is hard, isn't it? Some of you brought a friend, you're like, John, thanks. That was a depressing story. That was, that was just terrible. Well, God is good, and he can be trusted. So if you're here today and you're wondering, can I trust him? I'm telling you. Scripture is filled with story after story. You can trust God. Even when you don't feel it, and even when everything around you, I mean, you are surrounded by the enemy. There's more for you than against you. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. I, I encourage you. Set that anchor. Set that anchor and let him lead you. Release control. Trust him. Trust him. God, you're so good. And life is hard. And there are, there are questions that we have. Of course we have. But at the end of the day, I don't think when we get to stand before you, we're going to be questioning you. I, I don't think we're going to get to heaven and, and stand before your throne and say, God, I have some questions for you. I don't think so. I think we're going to be humble, and I think we're going to fall to our knees. When we see Jesus face to face, we're going to not think of our questions. We're not going to think of all the calamity and all the things we went through, but we're going to say, thank you. So help us to get to that point now. Help us to bow now. Help us to humble ourselves now in our adversity. Help us to trust you more. Help us to grow our faith deeper. Lord, we thank you that your word is sharp. It's cutting, but it's good. And we needed it today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, amen. Wow, such an incredible message today, a challenging one, something that's kind of a hard story, and we really have to take a minute to take it in and really take some self-reflection, look in the mirror and ask ourselves where we're at in the middle of our circumstances and how are we responding 
to when our answer prayers don't get answered and things don't go the way we plan. And uh, man, John brought it. He brought it this morning and maybe it hurt a bit. But I want to encourage you guys that even in the midst of that, that if you just take a step and you continue to trust in God, to put your trust and your faith in Him, let that relationship with Jesus grow. He will strengthen you. He will help you. And He'll be with you as you face challenging things and difficult situations, unanswered prayers, and all of the above. And it's difficult to trust Jesus when we don't know Him, when we don't know about Him or who He is. And if you're just now starting your journey or maybe you just haven't known who Jesus was because you've been around him, but you just really truly haven't been exposed to knowing who is this Jesus. But well, we have a resource for you. <laughs> um, we have a resource called, uh, it's our G Who is Jesus page. It's hopefellowship.net slash Jesus. And I want to encourage you guys, man, if you are one of the people and you're listening to John talk about uh, shallow faith and you're thinking, is that me? Um, I just recommend, hey, check out this page. Learn more about who Jesus is as you begin or continue your journey. Um, if you are wanting to follow Jesus today, we want to resource you. We want to help you. We want to come alongside you. So pull your phone out and text HOPE online to 97000. When you do that, we'll send you a link. Let us know you're crossing the line of faith. What that really means is you're taking a step closer to the center of God's purpose. You want to know more about following Jesus. We want to um, send you a devotional. He talked about Right Now Media today. We have that information for you. So definitely text HOPE online to 97000 so that we can come alongside you, help you walk out your journey of faith and getting closer to the center of God's purpose for your life. We're so, so glad that you joined us for service today. Although challenging, I hope it was encouraging and it moves you closer to what God has for you in your life. Um, if you're looking for other ways to get connected to Hope, maybe you just want to know more about us, you can go to hopeonline.cc. That's hopeonline.cc. We're so glad that you were here today and we will see you next weekend. Bye guys.